Alright, we're back on sports. In last week's video, what did I tell you? That this was going to be a big rivalry week for us Philadelphia fans. Not just us Eagles fans, but Philadelphia fans. As you know, the Sixers lost to the Celtics. That's right, rivalry week. I told you before that when we start losing all these games, Philadelphia fans, it gets kind of funny at first, alright? We saw the Flyers lose to the Bruins. Then we saw them lose to Montreal, alright? Because they're, they're both rivalry games. And now we had the Eagles who beat the Giants. Now, I'll put it like this. I'm not going to get on all the, you know, what happened throughout the whole week when it comes to us losing rivalry. I'm not going to get in that because what happened over the weekend, the information I've seen, especially what happened last night when it came to Giants and Eagles with a specific radio host, all right, which I will get to, understand that when I went to sleep last night, before I went to sleep, I thought to myself, they better pray. They better pray that I don't wake up in the morning because when I get the chance to get on video, I'm going after them. All right? And I say that not just for this video, because right? nothing short of a massive coronary could have stopped me from doing this video today. But understand, with the, all the information I've seen over the weekend and last week, up to now, this entire week, when it comes to videos, it's going to be pure hell. So I will put it like this. You better pray that I don't wake up tomorrow and do a game video. I'm telling you. What we're going to talk about today, you know what, let's just get started right now. We're going to talk about, we're going to take it back to earlier this week when it came to Eagles versus Giants. Because Giants players didn't know when to shut their mouth. They're taking pictures with fans saying, you don't have Super Bowls. No, 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 no. DRC had the nerve to come out and say we have zero Super Bowls. Here's the damn picture. Now, after talking with Giants fans over the week about that fan this is not about the robbery for that guy. This is about him self-promoting himself. Because if you look online, there are a number of pictures that he has. He does it at the stadium. He does it at the store. He does it right outside the stadium, leaning over a grate. This guy does this simply for attention, not because of the robbery. And for what you Giants fans told me on Twitter, they're actually pretty pissed off at this guy. Not only that, for those who don't know, Tom Coughlin had to pull those players into a meeting and tell him how pissed off he was at them. Because of the, the fact they took that picture with that fan. Because he said he wanted no distractions this week when going into the game. And as we can see, the Giants did more talking than they did actually playing. Alright? JPP also came out and said, you know, the Eagles, they should be, you know, they, they're 4-1, they're, they're but they could easily be 0-4. Obviously, Giants players have a problem with counting. As far as I'm concerned, this is something that the Giants players, because they didn't show up. As far as I'm concerned, and you know what? Giants fans said the same thing. I will talk about Giants fans later. You, you guys and girls were really cool to talk to over the week about this, all right? And especially last night. But first, we got to get to the game. And actually, before the game. Because once again, the media makes us Eagles fans and our team the underdogs in last night's game. Hmm, so, professionals, I have some questions to ask you. How's that salt? How's it feel? Hold that, as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I can't wait to hear the backpedaling on this one from these professionals. Oh, wait, wait. We already know. Since halftime, they've already made excuses. It was, well, the Eagles aren't that good. It's just the Giants are just bad today. They're not playing well at all. They're making the Eagles look so good. They don't want to give us any damn credit whatsoever. And I find it funny, because what did I tell you last week, huh? In last week's video, I told you the defensive front seven, Eli Manning was not going to have a chance. I told you you couldn't run on a damn defense. I told you Eli Manning would be taken off the spot. You know what? Game ball goes to the front seven, as far as I'm concerned. I told you to start handing them out. I will put it like this, okay? Eli was pressured. He was taken off the spot. He couldn't make his throws because of an emergency. The number of sacks from our team, they created so much pressure on the Giants. It was like a hot knife going through, not butter, but paper. That's right. Going through that offensive line. They didn't have a chance. And the thing about the scary part is, we're not even 100% healthy. Could you imagine if we had all our guys back? We are a team to be reckoned with. And for people like DRC to say, we got zero, we got zero, I find that funny. Because in the first half, he got torched for a touchdown like it was nothing to it. And Eagles fans who saw that picture earlier that week, they came back to DRC saying, hey, DRC, how many touchdowns you stopped today? Seriously, go take a lap. Run DRC, soft DRC, trash DRC, whatever you want to call yourself because you sure as hell didn't help us here when you were in Philadelphia, now did you? You know what? I'm done with this, guy. As far as I'm concerned, let's move on to other pressing matters, especially when I mean more about the media and how they want to keep disrespecting us. In the first two quarters, it was men against boys. Eagles 20, 
Giants nothing to the studio and Dan. All right, Bob, thank you. With Tony Dungy, Rodney Harrison. Is the Eagles defense this good? I don't think so. I think it's a lot on the New York Giants not playing good football. Well, if the Giants want to win, they have to find a way to protect Eli, keep a running back in, keep the tight end in, do something. Yeah. Some great observations there, right? So just ignore what our defensive front has done for the previous, what, three weeks? How much pressure they created? How much our special teams have played really well? And then you'll say, well, they have to find a way to protect Eli. They have to keep a running back in there. Do you understand how blank these blanket statements are okay for some reason? Because they don't have anything that they can put on their shield and say, hey, this is what we believe in. So now we have to make a bunch of crap up so that, you know, you believe in us that we're a legit, you know, halftime, you know, commentators. That's what they're doing. Both of them don't know what the hell they're talking about as far as I'm concerned. If you've watched the Eagles, you would know this. And if you haven't watched the Eagles, then just say that. But instead, you want to come up, it's the, it's the Giants' fault. You know, just, they just didn't come to play or, yeah, you just need to do something. That's not good enough. But yeah, NBC thinks that's okay to put on the air. Now, I put it like this. Tony Dungy, I respect Tony Dungy. He's a great coach, all right? But in this case, he has no idea what he's talking about. And the fact is, I said to you Giants fans, you know, first half, that's just one thing. And we saw what happened during the touchdown, did we not, with Victor Cruz. Now, Victor Cruz should have had that ball, but as we know, he tore his patella tendon, and then he just went down. And it was sad to see a number of us like, oh, we, we hope he's okay. We saw a number of Eagles and Giants players go over and take a knee and see if he was okay. And then they, they you know, we didn't, we found out really quickly if it was torn or not, which was kind of shocking to me. I was like, they found out very quick, you know, the doctors. So as far as I'm concerned, there's something that you never want to see happen to a player who's just trying to feed his family. And then, for those who don't know, 97 fives, Mike Missinelli comes out. That's right. And makes fun and celebrates the fact that Victor Cruz got hurt. Such low class, low brow, despicable. You know what? I expect this from 97.5. After the things that I've witnessed with them and my own experience with them, yeah, this is nothing surprising as far as I'm concerned from them. And Matt Nahagan, I hope you're really listening. Because this goes out to you and the rest of your crony staff, as far as I'm concerned, after that last night. There is no way in hell you can sit there and think that's okay to say. And here's the thing. Because people, there was an uproar about it. And people went after Mike Missinelli. And then he tried to backtrack and say, I really didn't see it, actually. I wasn't even in the stadium when it happened. I was seeing it as I was leaving. L listen to the backtrack. Because, you know, these, this backtracking he's doing, I put it like this. A team needs to pick him up for this elite backtracking. And I also put it like this, alright? This goes to show you what type of fraud he is. It really does. Let's get started with the tweets, because I've been waiting for this part. Do you really think that somebody's going to believe that? You've got to be kidding me. I will put it like this. As soon as Victor Cruz dropped the ball, he went right to his knee, did he not? Anyone who saw the play, anyone who watched it, you knew he was hurt immediately. Don't tell me you saw him drop the pass and say, oh, it's over. First off, it's one pass. Why would you say it's over? over for him if you just saw the one pass and not the injury. How would you say that? Don't tell me, oh, well, it's over for him to be a go-to guy. One pass? Do you think the quarterback, Eli Man, all of a sudden, after all this time, is going to say, oh, he dropped that one pass in the end zone. It's over for him. I'm never going to throw him the ball again when it comes to being the number one guy. You've got to be kidding me, Mike Missinelli. So, number one, either you overreacted, or two, you meant this. Because there's no way in hell that you did not see the injury as soon as he dropped the ball. You saw him there. It happened immediately. It was like a chain reaction. So don't give me that. But let's see more of his backtracking. Because if you don't believe me, look at the timestamp when he said it. And then all of a sudden decide he wanted to, you know, respond once he started seeing the backlash of it all. So, he's saying that he didn't see him get hurt because he was in the parking lot. Or he was going to the parking lot walking to his car, right? So it means he's coming out the stadium. First off, that's another thing. Why is this guy who calls himself the leader in sports radio here in Philadelphia, why are you leaving the game a rivalry game in the first half? Why are you doing that? That's number one, okay? But you're going to the parking lot. You're leaving the stadium. You're going to the parking lot to go to your car, right? Because that's what he's saying. He's not saying he's going anywhere else. He's in the parking lot. He's seen on the big screen outside, going to his car to the parking lot. He didn't get hurt. I want you to remember that, okay? Because his next tweet says that he wasn't going to a car, that he was going to the subway. Once a liar, 
always a liar, absolutely lying. You can't sit here and tell me that you're going to say, I was going to my car, but I was going to the subway. But what I meant was, I was going to the subway to get on the subway to go to my car. No, 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 no. No one is falling for this other than what maybe I've seen on your Twitter all, was it five people? You have to be kidding me if you think that this is going to fly. This is what you call backpedaling at its finest. No way in hell can you sit here and say, I didn't see the injury, even though it happened a couple seconds afterwards, all right? I was going to my car, wait a minute, I was going to the subway, wait a minute. I would never wish that on someone, even though we saw you say that initially. That's what started all of this. And then you expect people to all of a sudden take your apology? No, it doesn't work that way. You talked yourself into a hole, and you know what? I'm going to talk about this, because 97.5 has done this time and time again. You've seen before what I went through with them. When it came with that coward Sean Brace, all right, taking my stuff. This is a guy, Mike Mussinelli, all right, that looked me in the eye in the studio and shook my hand. Frail guy, too. Very frail, okay? Very middle, you know, old man frail, okay? He is an old man. Let's get this straight here. So when you see his tweets about how, stop that, bro, chill, hun, and chill, chick, and all this, and this gonna be good. Not, look, let's get something straight. These midlife crisis people have to stop. These old culture vultures have to stop. Matt Nahagan, I told you before, when Sean Brace got caught stealing my material and you called me, what did I tell you? I said, you need to reel it in. Do not give these guys that much power because of the fact they think they're superstars. They think that they're rogues. They can say anything they can. Matter of fact, Matt, I want to know this right now. All right. You have all these guys on your roster who can't talk a lick for sports. Okay. And you talk about how you're all for Philadelphia and Philadelphia sports. Where were you, Matt? Matter of fact, why didn't you send anyone on your roster when, in Germantown, Kenny Smith came here to renovate basketball courts? And people, you know, I went and I did the interview with him. Where were you, Matt, or 97.5, when Taney needed help before they got big? Hmm? You weren't around, were you? No. Where were you, Matt, or 97.5? All right, when these basketball courts around here get renovated in these neighborhoods, because that's where sports starts. What's that? Never around. No. Instead, you will plug, you know, buying, you know, buying these models out to put shirts on them and carrying on. We've done this time and time again. Your station is trash because you don't take care of it. This is why you keep having these bad ratings, Matt. And I understand business is business. So what Mike Missinelli said, you're going to say, well, it's good for business. It gives us, you know, exposure. But if that's what you have to get by in order to get some exposure, then you are no better than your competitor, which is, for those who don't know, 610. They love to talk about in their meetings how, what can we do to one-up them? Oh, what, you thought I wasn't going to talk about that, Matt? Yeah. Sitting in these chairs and bringing people in, and we want to pick people's brains off of Twitter and off of YouTube, and how can we make this bigger, you know, for our station? The fact is, you can start with yourself, and you can get it under control. But apparently, that's not what you want to do. There's a reason why Sean Brace got caught stealing my material and you apologized to me about it. There's a reason Tony Bruno is not there anymore. Remember, Tony Bruno said, you know, about black people and, you know, or should I say minorities in basketball, how they're all thugs. And what did he do? Dressed up in all these jerseys and stuff and started throwing up gang signs in the studio. Do we not see that? There's obviously some type of culture clash here. Like I said, culture vultures. You want to steal everything about us without giving us any credit or giving back. And now this one, Mike Missinelli, who has a history of sexism as well. And I will get in that in a minute. But with this going on, okay, we have fans who don't believe Mike Missinelli. Matter of fact, like I said, there's about 99, maybe 0.9% who do not believe Mike Missinelli at all in his explaining and his apologizing. Nobody believes Mike Missinelli on this, and the thing is, he should be fired for his comments, but if you look at his history, this is something that has just been brewing, so if anything, that should get him fired even more, okay? Because for those who don't know, before, when he said to Michelle Beadle, he was making fun of her weight. Who the hell is this guy to come out to make fun of her weight while he's watching her on TV?
But that's not all. This is the same Mike Masinelli that said our legendary kicker, David Akers, all right, yes, right, Eagles fans, he said he was a girl, that he wasn't an athlete because he's only a kicker. This is the same Mike Masinelli, old man who sits in a booth, all right, and obviously doesn't stay for all the games, okay, or stay for only stays for half the game, all right, is going to tell somebody who has no, no type of athletic athletes whatsoever, Mike Masinelli, is going to tell another athlete, a pro athlete, that he's not an athlete. What's the last time you've done something athletic, Mike Missinelli? Huh? You play golf? Is that what you even call an athlete, huh? You went swimming on your vacation? Is that athletic enough for you? Where are you at? I don't see you out here playing basketball. I don't see you out here playing football. Because I guarantee you, David Akers, when he leaves the NFL, he'll still be able to play football on some type of recreation level. What's your recreation? Leaving your car to the stadium? Huh? Oh, I forgot. You gotta walk to your car. You didn't see the play that happened immediately. Wait a minute. You weren't walking to your car. You were walking to the, uh, to the, was it, to the parking lot to get to the subway. Then, you weren't walking. You were running to the subway. Stop this, man! What's wrong with you? You know and I know that this is a bunch of garbage. And you should be ashamed of yourself. But of course you're not because you're going to sit and backtrack and, I don't want to lose my job. You deserve to lose your job, especially given your track record. And for those who don't know more about his track record, it's the same guy who got fired from WIP because he got into an altercation with his producer. Sexism, lies, celebrating people getting injured. There's no excuse for it. There's no justifying it. As far as I'm concerned, you deserve to be fired. And like I said, not just for what happened last night, but your track record has added up, as far as I'm concerned. It is disgusting that you would do something like this. And I will put it like this, because I'm going to say this very clearly right now. And this goes to anybody who's in my inner circle, or is just a fan of my videos. Any of you who I find out who are still following Sean Brace, John Marks, anybody from 97.5 or following 97.5 in general, I will cut you off. That's right. I don't care how close you are to me or not. I will cut you off. If I find out you're following him or, hey, I just finished listening to 97.5, I will cut you off. People don't think I can be ruthless. You've never seen me be ruthless. You're going to see it today. So as far as I'm concerned, now loyalty is at play. First off, you shouldn't have been following him anyway after what happened to me, all right? It goes to show you how much you give a damn about my well-being or how, much, how I feel about things. It goes to show you. They said there's a lot of frauds around here. And now it's going to be cut off. 97.5 is a joke. Until Matt Nahagan decides to step up and clean up the act of what he has going on there, nobody should listen to them. Nobody should watch their videos, which, matter of fact, no one watches their videos anyway, as far as I'm concerned. If you look at the views, it's, it's not much, bro. But I put it like this. At the end of the day, this comes down to drawing a line in the sand. And if he's going to sit here and say something like this, and he's not fired because you want to take this, you know, this popularity, this exposure, and run with it, it goes to show you what they're about. They're not about sports. Like I said, man, it's something you shouldn't even take, you know, you shouldn't even take into consideration to think, hey, I should give them the benefit of the doubt. No, they've had their chance. How many times I've said to them on Twitter, I will bury anybody on your staff when it comes to debate about sports. And what did they do? And everyone saw what they did. This is what they did. Yep, because they knew they couldn't do anything because they knew I was right. And I'll say it again for you if you need it here on video. I will bury anybody, and I mean anybody, on that station. That's why you brought me in to begin with, because you knew what I was about. And then when I saw what was going on, I decided to walk away. Like I said, you came and talked to me. You came and got me, and then you came and apologized to me, because you knew you were wrong. You were supposed to be a bunch of grown men. Act like it. Don't represent Philadelphia at all. Hell, your, 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 your office is in what? City Avenue is like 15 minutes away from Ardmore? And you don't even come down to Philadelphia? Get out of my face, man. But that's not all. After all of this, the New York media also picked up on Mike Missinelli's tweet and used it on their front page. Afterwards, I spoke to Giants fans on the issue, and a lot of Giants fans said they wanted to thank us Eagles fans for jumping all over Mike Missinelli for his statements because they thought that we would just back him. No, you don't have to thank us because it's the right thing to do. See, at the end of the day, even though we have our rivalry, understand that guy who says that he's the leader, you know, our leader just leaves, you know, halfway in the middle of a game, 
our leader. Yeah, I don't know who appointed him that anyway, but, you know, he doesn't represent Philadelphia sports, and he doesn't speak for me either. Like I said, this is something we all want to be entertained with. You know, it's the rivalry, we get it. But when somebody goes down, somebody could, he could possibly lose his damn career. You know? We all take a knee to that. Just like the players do. Like I said, we just want to be entertained and have fun. That's what it's about. No way can anybody, and I mean anybody, defend that trash. So Giants fans, I understand how you feel, but like I said, you do not have to thank us. I, I do also feel as though... Your New York newspaper who used the tweet. I don't have a problem with him, you know, them using the tweet as much as I do the background picture of the guy cheering because clearly the guy's cheering because of the fact that initially he dropped the ball. Initially, a couple seconds. Don't tell me a guy initially cheering dropped the ball and Mike Missinelli, who sees what's going on, decided to tweet, make sure it was right, and then send it, didn't see it. There's a difference, okay? You should have showed the picture with the players all kneeling down. And showing that, you know, we're all in this together. And show directed towards it. Because they showed the hate towards Mike Missanelli. And it's rightfully show, so that it should have happened. But that's not all. We have more people that are in our ranks, Eagles fans. That decide that they're going to trash on our team. That's right. Because it wasn't just the media that showed you earlier with Tony Junji and Marvin Harrison. Not Marvin Harrison. And, and whatever his damn name is. It's one of those damn Harrisons, ain't it? That's the guy who's caught with PEDs anyway, right? Okay, Rodney Harrison, that's his name. He was called PEDs and cheating, so it doesn't matter, all right? His, his, his opinion means nothing. But now we have our own, once again, Brian Westbrook. Once again says that our defense wasn't that good, that it's not that good, that he wasn't buying into it. Here is our quarterback comparison presented by Krasno, Krasno, and I'm with Dinjo. And you see Nick Foles' passer rating. At one point, it was over 100. Then he threw the two picks. And that's why you see 79, 248 yards, a completion percentage of almost 62, two touchdowns, two interceptions. He leads the NFL with 10 total turnovers, seven INTs, three fumbles. Eli Manning, uh, no touchdowns, no interceptions, 56.5% completion, 151 yards, ended the game on the bench as um, Ryan Ness and Malvern Prep's own prior to Syracuse University, did the mop-up uh, or, or the, the final moments for the New York Giants. I think he was mopped up. Mm -hmm. I, I think so. Two but, sacks. Yeah, he went by the, uh, that great Eagles defense. And, and by the way, it, it, the defense is becoming a strength of the team, at least the front seven. Now, I'm not talking about the secondary. who had a good game tonight. But the front seven has been doing this all season long. Are we prepared to say they are as strong a front well, seven as any in, in football? And, and They're getting sacks. They're forcing turnovers. You're not buying it. Why aren't you? The second time now, Brian Westbrook, you have had doubts on a team in a rivalry game. I don't care what you have to say at this point. I don't understand how you keep a job. As soon as he said, Barkan said, you have doubts on our front seven, that was it for me. Don't even care what you got to say. I'm so tired of these frauds and they sit and they get paid to do this. You know, speaking of frauds, let's move on because now I have to show you our Griffin Force. That's right, we're bringing it back already. Flop of the week. Which is a good segue into basketball. So let's talk basketball, okay? The Sixers look absolutely horrible. Even though it's preseason, it seems as though people still don't get the chemistry of this team. Tony Roten, let's get something straight about this guy. I told you before, yes, he's fast, yes, he's explosive, but he has doubts on his game. And already we are seeing that he has doubts on how to play or to run an offense. For those I'm getting ready to show you, why, and I'm telling you this now, if you're looking at the play, why does this man, as a guard, not take the jump shot instead of going inside when you have X amount of feet to take the shot. It goes to show you this guy does not have any confidence whatsoever in his jump shot from the key. Better replaced by the rookie Marcus Martin is back in number 36. Sims after the deflected shot, there is Rope, and he is going to be called for the charge. We've talked about this before. As a guard, you need to at least have a jump shot to survive in the NBA. If you're going to be a point guard, then 
You don't try and drive, you don't take the ball in it whatsoever. You just try and penetrate. And if it doesn't work, you come out and you kick the ball out. That's what you do. Tony Roden, as we know, is a slasher, but he is an inside scorer. But if he's going to survive, he needs to take his time and think on where he should take his spots and his jump shots. That right there is a good estimation on immaturity. And I'm not just saying is in, in the pros. No, I'm saying as a basketball player in general. So you're paying this guy all this money to play on the grandest stage to do that. Bad decision making. Clearly, you have the jump shot. Take the jump shot if you have it. That's what you do. All right, that's what you practice for. But instead, you decide to fake the jump shot, go in, draw, you know, and, and get, you know, and draw a foul. And thought you drew the foul, but it ended up being a charge. That's sad. But that's not all. Within this Sixers-Celtics game, because I said before, the Summer League team was better than this team that we're seeing right now. And I understand that, you know, Mike Carter Williams is not ready to play yet. So we won't see that much of Tony Roten out there trying to, you know, run around with, like a chicken with his head cut off, all right? But during this game, good old Evan Turner. Good old, e I'll put it like this. I don't understand what people still see in Evan Turner. He's still one-dimensional. He still has the same dribble. And you know he's only going to go around his back because it's the only way he can get behind, the, you know, get around defenders, all right? But as usual, Evan Turner, who, for those who didn't know last year, was, the, the, I believe, the most blocked player in the league because the way, the bad decision-making, once again, he chucks up shots or laughs and thinks that people aren't going to block him, and it happens again. The three eventually broke it up. Kevin Garnett. Paul Pierce, oh, Ray Allen, the block in there. And it blocked. Welcome to the block party, son. Even Malik Rose, if you heard in the comments, he's like, ooh. Yeah, that's exactly, because he should have known better. This is something that happens to him time and time again. And, you know, out in Boston, they're talking about, is he going to be a starter? And he already said, look, we're going to keep changing up the lineups because we don't know what we're going to do. There is no way that Evan Turner is a starter in this league. No way. Not when you're making bad decisions like this, and this is something that happens consistently. Consistently. Now he's worked on his jump shot when it comes to being in the corner, but that's it. That's all he's done. He still has the same one-dimensional dribble, the same get by. It's the same thing over and over with this guy. And yet, somehow, he finds a way to keep getting paid. <laughs> so, as much as I'm not mad at Evan Turner for finding a way to get paid, you should be mad at your franchises for actually taking the gamble. Because it goes to show you, you don't have any depth. That's, that's what it is for now on. If you're picking up Evan Turner, it means you have no depth on your bench or on your team in general, as far as I'm concerned. And speaking of no depth, all right? We're going to talk about LeBron James real quick. For those who don't know, LeBron James with the Cleveland Cavaliers played against the Miami Heat. That's right. Now, we've been hitting, hearing reports all week about how Chris Bosh hasn't talked to LeBron since the breakup. And people have been like, oh, he's, you know, he's acting like a scorned girlfriend or boyfriend and he should be ashamed of himself. It's just business. And we saw Chris Bosh not too long ago come out and say, it's just business. You know what I mean? It's competition and we're going to play against each other like we've done, you know, in the past. But what LeBron James did, if you didn't see it, which I believe made the not top 10 plays of the week, LeBron James apparently still feels he's on the Heat. That's right, because he sets a pick for the Heat players, that's right, against his own team. I guess old habits die hard because when you play street basketball, no one has like the same jerseys on, you know, coordinated jerseys on. No, in the pickup game, you gotta remember these guys' faces or girls' faces right away. I've never seen anybody if, in street ball, you know what I mean, pick their own teammate instead of <laughs> against their own teammate. Let alone in an NBA game where you have matching jerseys and everything, also you know who is who. But King, no. Greatest player in the world, though. Like, you got to be kidding me here. This is, it's absolutely hilarious to see this. LeBron, I understand it is preseason. Get it together. You should know better than that. I'm just saying. I'm not going to really jump on you. It's more funny than anything. But come on, people. Come on. Now, I will say this real quick. Kevin Durant update. For those who don't know, he is injured. He will be, I believe, six to eight weeks. So we will see what the Thunder can do with Russell Westbrook until then. Anyways, I am done. I know I didn't get a chance to really talk about hockey. I didn't get a chance to really talk about uh, the rest of the NFL, but my time is limited today. I still have a lot of stuff to do here. I may have to do more videos this week. I mean, other than the gaming, I may have to do some extra videos. We'll see what happens if I have the time. I will talk to you later. Y'all be safe. I'm out. Fire. Mike Masinelli.